is offering a deal if they put down their weapons. However, whether or not the offer of amnesty is fully respected by such a fragile government remains to be seen. Jill Biden, the wife of U.S. Vice President Joe Biden, has arrived in Kenya to examine the famine and humanitarian aid crisis in the Horn of Africa region. The United States has promised an additional $105 million to help the victims of drought in this hard-hit region. The United Nations says some 12 million people are at risk. In Uganda, the future is looking brighter for Kize Bizigye, the opposition leader seen here being arrested. He was charged with inciting violence and refusing to obey orders. Judges said there was not enough proof and have shut down the case against him. Bizigye still faces charges of holding illegal meetings. He was arrested four times this past April during marches against the high cost of living. This investigation by the BBC is particularly frightening. The tents shown here are allegedly a torture center located next to the Marangi Mine in Zimbabwe, a major diamond center in the country. Rapes and beatings allegedly took place here. Policemen and soldiers terrorized civilians into digging for the diamonds. The revelations by the BBC come as Zimbabwe has been given partial authorization to recommence sales of diamonds from the Marangi Mine. Riots that began in Tottenham have spilled over the other parts of the country. The incident, sparked by a police shooting of a suspect, has resulted in mass looting with many more buildings set ablaze. The situation has forced the British Prime Minister David Cameron to warn that all those who are responsible for the violent behaviour will face the full force of the law. We have details in this report. Rioting continued overnight Monday across England for the third day as police tried to re-establish order. So far, 450 people have been arrested and one person was killed on Tuesday. The unrest began on Saturday when a peaceful protest over a police shooting of a suspect turned to violence. They could have arrested him, done what they needed to do, but said they killed him and now everyone's fighting back to prove that we, we, we got to stand here. We're not going to stand and take this. Stores and shops have been looted by rioters and several buildings were set on fire across the country. Shop owners have had to sit by and watch the destruction, powerless to do anything. Uh, it's a friend of mine, he called me that, you know, your shop got broken into. And, and the police, police, haven't police has not responded still now. The riots began in Tottenham in northern London and spread to other districts in the city. They then spread to Birmingham, Bristol and Liverpool. Prime Minister David Cameroon is holding emergency crisis talks over the escalating violence. He is deploying 16,000 police officers in London on Tuesday. He has vowed to punish the rioters to the full extent of the law. Good morning. I am determined, the government is determined, that justice will be done and these people will see the consequences of their actions. And I have this very clear message to those people who are responsible for this wrongdoing and criminality. You will feel the full force of the law. Some commentators say that the rioting is the result of a growing social problem. But authorities called the rioters criminals and said that the violence would not hamper preparations for next summer's Olympic Games. News on Sports is up next. We'll be back after the break. Diamond Properties.
The Scorpions staged their final training session ahead of the big friendly encounter with the Democratic Republic of Congo in Banjul. Paul Putt and his team are using the international friendly on Wednesday to prepare the final round of qualifiers against Namibia and Burkina Faso in September and October 2011. Babkar Senghor watched the team at the Independence Stadium and he reports the mood is high in the camp ahead of the clash. Paul Port led his troops to their final training session at the Independent Stadium where many of these players indulged in some inspiring performances in the past. A lot of them will be expecting to stamp their authority in the country's football folklore with some superb performances against the Art Congo on Wednesday. The friendly is a launch pad to the coming games against Namibia and Burkina Faso, games Paul Port refers to as very important ones. The Belgian tactician is without a number of force teamers, but he has in the likes of Mustafa Jaju, Modu Sise, and Sananyasi, some of the stellar names in our game that can lure a greater number of fans to the independent stadium. This game comes hard on the heels of the team's success against Gabon in Libreville. This particular friendly do does have greater significance for the coach and players. Not since some couple of years, the Scorpions played a friendly encounter in front of their passionate home support. Perhaps it is the perfect timing for Paul Pot and team to engage their many great followers on what is in store ahead of the Burkina Faso game in Banjul. I know uh, our Gambian uh, supporters, they are great in, uh, in all times. So I know that he will be here to support us. Uh, is the last time before a crucial game in Naibia. And I know uh, we have a lot of respect uh, for them, and I hope uh, that they will come and support us tomorrow. Mustafa Jaju is among a host of foreign base players in the side. The former Walidan and Steve Bigosta, who had one of his better seasons in Belgium before a move to the MLS, says the team is in good spirit ahead of the friendly encounter. I'm very happy you know, to be here because uh, it's been a while you know, playing home game and. Uh, for the home crowd, you know, and I think for us it's a very important game, you know, f to prepare to play against uh, Namibia on the start of September, you know, and I'm very glad to be here, and then I hope tomorrow we have something, you know. Uh, what we want is for every Gambian to come and support the boys, because this is going to be our last match before our match proper, which is going to be a must win situation. For some of the players, though, the game might have come at the right time, as it will serve to build confidence, and for others, a game that should solely 45 reputations for JRT Sport is Babuka Senghor. Well, good luck to the boys. And from sports, we now join the Central Forecast Office for a look at the weather report after this. can drive your way there with the El Tinto Mecca Jafale Kafo promo. The Hajj is possible. Stay loyal or become a member of the Elton Jafale Kafo today and enjoy the double take. Because every time you fill your tank at any of our Elton stations, you get a chance to be in our monthly raffle draw. To take home lots of goodies like gallons of oil, bags of rice, bags of sugar, vehicle accessories and much more. Plus a chance to become the lucky winner of the El Tinto Mecca Jafale Kafo fully paid Hajj expenses. Remember, it's a double take, your single loyalty for the monthly draw and the Elton Tomeka Jafale Kafo final draw to be held just before the Hajj. For more information, drop by any of our Elton station. Elton, a new vision of service. Good evening and welcome to the weather segment. We begin with a summary of today's weather followed by the forecast. Conditions over the Gambia today were mainly cloudy and rain affected parts of the country. The figures obtained are as follows. The highest was over Yundum, 66.7 millimeters. Kerawang recorded 47.4, Basse 18.1. Dinoy and Sibanor both recorded 11.2 millimeters. For what will follow, let's start with a look at the image captured at 16.30 hours, indicating the presence of convective clouds scattered over parts of West African countries, Central and Eastern Africa. North and Southern Africa regionally dry and stable during the period. For our forecast tonight, we are expecting a variably cloud atmosphere across the Gambia. It will be warm and humid, with rain and thunderstorms expected, particularly over the western sector of the country. 
Day tomorrow will be partly cloudy, warm, humid, with chances of rain and thunderstorms over places. Winds will be southeasterly in orientation and generally.